personally, I think, and this is a bit controversial maybe for some, but having been raised in the church, um, I'm just convinced that one of the reasons we are in America specifically, one of the reasons we are in the condition that we're in is because a number of years ago, too many in the church decided that uh, their goal was just to get out of here. Absolutely. So they're going to try to enjoy life as Preach. long as they could, enjoy yes. life to the max here, and then uh, escape. And when that happened, when we became preoccupied with leaving, we yes. failed to do what Jesus said in Luke 19, 13. Jesus said, using a parable, but he teaches occupy. The old King James uses that word, occupy. New King James says, do business. The English Standard Version says, be engaged. Occupy until I come. Occupy all the way up until I get back. The word occupy wow. can, can also be defined as fill the space. Fill the space. Fill the Brilliant. space where you are all the way up until I return. But what the church became preoccupied with leaving. And, and we, we started practicing the rapture. We had rapture yes. practice. All right. Absolutely. So we can get up. And I certainly believe Jesus is coming again. And if he comes during this interview, I'm all for it. Hallelujah. Yes. I Hallelujah. want to see him face Even to face. So but there's so much work to do. There's a world that needs to be reached. And the church has got to uh, fill this. I love that definition of that word. Fill the space fill where the space. we are. I'm looking just now, Luke 19 in the English Standard Version says, engage in business until I come. Yeah. In other yes. words, get involved in the world. People contact me and right. say, you know, I, I'm, I'm very vocal as far as my beliefs. I think that abortion mm -hmm. is murder. I think that yes, sir. A, an alternative lifestyle is not, is not according to God's word because he clearly speaks right. about it. And, and pastors mm -hmm. have contacted me and says, oh, you'll upset the people. We need to, if that's what upsets the people, yeah. we need to upset the people because we need to occupy and be, be right. contending for the faith. What, what does contending yes. for the faith if, if, if it is an occupation? Right. It's, uh, we've got to see ourselves as the ecclesia. We yes. are an occupying force until yes. the Lord returns. John the Baptist came as the voice of one crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. And I believe that we're in that season where we need to be a voice. The church has been echoing the world. We've been echoing the world, trying yes. to be relevant, trying to trying to reach people in every way that they're comfortable with. But what the what the people are desperate for the voice. They they flock to John the Baptist. It's an amazing thing. John the Baptist uh, had no miracles, no blind Saul. No deaf ears, wow. no lame people walked under his ministry. Yeah. But Jesus said he's the greatest prophet born among women. And what was his message? Jesus. He just proclaimed Jesus is coming, preparing the way. And he was so anointed, though, that the multitudes flocked to his voice, to his message. Yeah. And he wasn't popular either. And he upset some people, too. But he was preparing the way for Jesus. If the church is going to prepare the way for the Lord to return, then we've got to become the voice or voices of yes. people crying out in this Absolutely. wilderness. Jesus is still Lord. Yes. The Bible is still true. And he's the same. He still saves. He heals. Okay. He delivers. He frees. And he's the answer. Don't you find that if you try to gain everybody... You end up losing everybody because if, if you yes. try to be all things to all men, what happens to you is you so dilute the message and you're, you're chasing mm -hmm. your tail, trying to please every a, a whim of opinion that comes into yeah. your life. And you may be a pastor right. watching today. And um, I'm telling you now, the reason, one of the reasons I, I'm not called to pastor a church is because half the, half the decisions you make, half the church is going to not like it. But unless you have a clear right. inner bell, a, 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 a compass yes. point that you say, this is the way, walk yeah. ye in it. What will happen is you'll find that people will respond to a shorter sound than someone that will try to please. Eventually, listen to me, Pastor Friend, right. eventually you lose everybody. 
And um, God's looking for men and women that will stand up and say, listen, here we are. We're planted here and we're going to occupy this spot and we're going to grow from yes. here, from yes. this place out the way. Tremendous stuff. That's it. That's it. Exactly. And if uh, more, more concerning, of course, to you and to me and to any pastor, every pastor watching or, or minister is uh, losing the, the Holy Spirit. The Holy wow. Spirit confirms the word of truth. It, the, when I, I started preaching as a 15 year old teenager and early in my teen years, the Lord spoke something to me that revolutionized my life. He said to me, I am not obligated to anoint your opinion, but my word is always anointed. Could you please repeat and, that? And so if we back up from the word. Could you repeat yeah. that again? That's worth repeating. Listen, listen, pastor, listen, it, friends. It changed my life. The Lord oh said to me, I am never obligated to anoint your opinion, oh my but I God. always anoint my word. God. So if we speak his truth, his oh presence is there. Of course, we, and we speak it in love. Uh, people who speak the truth, but not in love, yeah, of course, they've missed it as well because it's the word and the spirit and God is love. And so his spirit is love. But love sometimes says tough things. But in a way in which people know, you know, Jesus never compromised about sin, but people love to hang around him Surely. because they knew that he valued them, that he loved them, that he was for them and and not against them. And that's what occupying is filling the space with what fills us. That's so powerful. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my. You, you, uh, let me tell you, I, I know when a Rhema word is being spoken because it, it challenges yeah. and speaks to me. And what you're Praise saying God. just now is in, in this transient, I mean, the church, I'm, I'm having pastors call me continuously. We don't know what to do. Do we, do we open? Do we not open? What, 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 you know, my personal opinion is that these social platforms, um, the church is next. Yeah. Let me tell you, they, they're mm -hmm. coming for the church. They're going to come to us and say to us, yes, sir. what you're preaching is hate speech. Because when you read these mm -hmm. scriptures, that is offending people and that's against people's yeah. belief systems. Therefore, listen, America, therefore the Bible mm -hmm. right. is a hate speech document. And because of that, we yeah. don't want you on our platforms. And um, the church needs to get his voice and speak clearly. Yes. Yes. Clearly. Yes. One of the things we're working on as hard as we can is to, is to make that our Facebook platform and, and the, the, the different platforms that we're on is not our main source of contact. Because I don't know, yes. honestly, how long these, this area... I'm praying that God will use someone to start a new one that we will flock towards Amen. because of free speech and we can, we can yes. speak about the gospel without fear yeah. of contradiction. But occupying yes, and, 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 and possessing your place is absolutely mm -hmm. key to what God is calling the church to do. Absolutely. And, and we're, interestingly, we're working on the same things here because I agree with you. I think uh, it's tenuous what's happening with social yes. media, YouTube, yes. Facebook, the major platforms. So we're working as well to try to be prepared for yeah. when they uh, <laughs> when they boot us uh, boot us off. Uh, you know, occupying. There's a there's a scripture that everybody loves in Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. The old King James, I like how it words it. It says to give you an expected end, to give you an expected oh, yeah. end. God, God is he who declares the end from the beginning. Yeah. So he's, he's got a plan. As you said, he's got a plan for every living person. And his plan is peace. The word shalom, yeah. which means more than just feeling peace full. It is well-being in every area of life. So God said, I'm not thinking bad about you. Uh, anyone that's watching, God's not mad at you. He's not planning bad things for you. He's got a good plan for your life, Absolutely. but you've got to get with his plan. And, and I've got to get with his plan. What, what people don't usually know about that verse is the context in which it is spoken. Because Jeremiah is writing to exiles in Babylon 
and they've been taken there by the king of Babylon and Jeremiah prophesied from, from the Lord. Here's what God says. This period of time is going to last 70 years. And then after 70 years, I'm going to restore you. So there were other prophets that rose up and, and said, no, it's not going to be 70 years. God's going to get us out of this in a couple of days. And everybody loved their prophecies and their Facebook pages and YouTube pages blew up and they were just amazing. All the, Any video they put up was just viewed millions of times. Millions of times. But Jeremiah's, <laughs> yeah, Jeremiah was just getting a little bit of viewing because his message wasn't oh what my. people wanted to hear. But in Jeremiah 29, there's some keys there that I think would change our life. He writes to them in the, in the fourth verse of that chapter. And he says, basically, I'll paraphrase, live where you are. Live, take sons, take, uh, give, uh, have children and give your children in marriage. Build yes. uh, houses, plant Occupy. gardens, live where you are. Occupy, fill the space wow. where you're at. Is God going to deliver us? Yes. When's he going to do it? We don't know the exact time when he's going to turn things around. But in the meantime, yes. occupy. occupy, fill the space where you oh, are. The second thing he told him is pray for the peace of the yes. place you're at. So be a peacemaker. Don't, don't you know, try, try, not, not a peacekeeper. Peacekeeper and a peacemaker are two different things. Two different things. Peacekeeper. I peacekeeper will do what you just described a peacekeeper will be a pastor who tries to please everybody yes but a oh, peacemaker is someone that comes with truth Brilliant. and says this is what we've got to say this is where we've got to live yeah pray for the peace where you are because if things go well where you are things go well with you so uh, so even right now even right now though we may not have voted for the president that's in office and though we may still, we're still waiting for God <laughs> to do something. Show up. <laughs> but even now, yes, show up and show off. <laughs> but even now, our calling is to fill the space, fill the time. Yes, don't, sir. don't despair. Don't pull back and pray. Pray for peace. Pray for peace in the White House. Pray for peace in D.C. Pray for peace, the shalom of heaven to flood our region and our area. The next thing he said to them Though he says, don't listen to the false voices. Bishop Tony Miller used to say something that just is so powerful. He says, whoever is informing us is forming us. Whoever informs us forms us. Boy, so powerful. Wow. Yeah. We've got to, we've got to pay attention to that. Because Jeremiah writes and says, there's a lot of people saying to you what you want to hear. But... Whoever's informing you is forming you. Yeah. And he, so he says, don't go seeking for just voices that please you. Listen for the word of God. Listen for the voice of God. Oh, we, need, we need God to train us. We need God to train us to have ears to hear mm. what the Spirit says. 